Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another one. It's gonna be a lot of chicken noise in the back of this video. The new chickens. Well, they're not new, but I've had them since they were little babies, and uh, they are finding their voice and being super loud. Got to get rid of a bunch of roosters. But today's video. Who knows what we're gonna get into. Right now, we're shooting arrows directly into the sun. Cause you never know when that bull is gonna walk right in front of that sun and you gotta make a good shot. Not really, I just, I'm lazy. I don't know what noise that was, but it sounded like an elk bark. Thirty-three yards. That worked. All right, guys. Uh, little rundown on the bow. Of course, Bowtech is a great sponsor of the channel, uh, and I've been shooting Bowtech since I was eight. I believe and my dad's been shooting them all my life so nothing new uh, for this family but this is a new bow last year's bow it is the carbon one I guess it's 2024 bow Actually shooting an older bow I have the newest bow that's coming out for next year can't show you it but I'm shooting this bow um, I'll give you a few reasons why here in a minute but this is the carbon one um, took this one to Africa and absolutely smacked some animals down with it um, so shooting the carbon one for a couple reasons uh, number one reason I did a big axis hunt a few months ago now uh, with the Bowtech crew in West Texas and that video is coming out very soon it's gonna be a long format video and uh, using the new bow that they came out with and it's not released yet I obviously can't show y'all the bow so I'm having to blur out the bow on the video so we can all see this big axis hunt video and it is awesome so y'all be sure to go check it out uh, but the, bur the bow will be blurred out so keep y'all guessing what y'all are going to be looking forward to for Bowtech here in a couple months when they do release it but that's the number one reason why I'm using it because I am headed to Colorado here in a few short days and uh, I want to be able to show you guys what I'm using and uh, do some real time hunt videos while I'm in Colorado so today's agenda um, is getting ready for Colorado I always wait till the last few days I told myself this year I wasn't gonna wait till the last day so I'm waiting till the second to last day but got to get the got to get the Land Cruiser up and in shape I got to get a, uh, a headlight I got to get her aligned got to shoot my bow a lot more I do feel confident with my bow Here's my big rooster over there chilling on my neighbors um, and then I got to pack up everything and I got to clean out some coolers I got to get this sucker I gotta get this sucker uh, some bleach in there and then get my other Yeti and we gotta go wash down some of my game bags here in a minute. Uh, here they are. And uh, I got seven pounds of elk jerky in the fridge. That is going on the made with meat Dehyd dehydrator today. So if y'all want to stick around, hang out with me. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about what's going on with the channel. Closer to the end of this video, we'll see where we get. We'll see where we get. This is what YouTube does to me. Can't talk. 
We'll see uh, where we get in this video. Y'all stay tuned. Show you a little game bag care. What you really need to do is do this as soon as you get home from your hunt and not wait till far five months later. So this these uh Kafaru game bags are from an elk hunt I did in January. We we're actually doing an elk movie um, from that hunt and that will be posting here in the next couple weeks. So these are a little crusty from that hunt. I just want to get them all undone. And then we're going to put them in some Dawn water. Real soapy. Make it real sudsy. But you can see they didn't stain too bad. They're just dirty. Really the only thing that's dirty is the outside where they were laid down on, uh, on the ground. The old backstrap bag right there. I'm gonna get that nice and submerged and we're gonna let these soak. Uh for a couple hours. And we're gonna wash all the soap out of them and hang them from a tree, let them air dry. I'm gonna scrub these coolers out. Then put some bleach in them, let them soak for a couple hours as well. And uh make sure they're perfect. Meat care is really important to me and uh, having a super, super clean cooler. I want a cooler when I go on a hunt that I can use the ice out of it to put in my drink. So make sure they're absolutely clean. Um, then they'll be ready. Jerky time. The boys are up. My helper, Ryder, is going to help me. And uh, we're going to use the old made with meat, meat and maker dehydrator. So... I don't know if we have enough meat to fill up all the trays, but I think I weighed it out. It was seven pounds yesterday whenever I put it in the cure. So my whole entire life, I grew up making my own jerky recipe. I never used a store-bought recipe or anything like that. And my buddy Stu came on our, he comes every year on our deer hunt in Colorado. He gets an elk tag and he brought like 10 pounds of maybe more than 10 pounds 10 like pounds? 10 pounds yeah he brought 10 ziploc gallon baggies he uses this stuff and he i trust him so i went and bought this i already did a batch this year with it and it was just super super easy and delicious so this is the cracked pepper and garlic we also got the hickory smoke i think uh i lost the hickory smoke so i used the cracked garlic cracked pepper and garlic and uh it was super super simple so we've had this, this is elk that has been marinating for 24 hours. Um, and I used to slice my jerky super, super thin. And now I make it super, super thick compared to what I used to do. So like this piece right here, you can see how thick it is. Probably a quarter of an inch. And uh, so it, it's worked out for me. Let's get these trays loaded and in the dehydrator. Make sure you make sure you spread the meat out. Now look. See it's one big piece. Gotta make sure it's spread out. And then what? And then clean them. Clean them? Yeah. And then what? Then we're gonna eat them. Yeah. Tell the camera how we made the jerky. 
so daddy shot this elk and beef jerky. I mean elk jerky. There you go. So we cut it up into strips. Yep. And then we seasoned it. And then what? Then we um we're gonna clean it. Yeah. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six trays full. I definitely could have done more, but this will definitely get eaten on the hunt. So temp and time, we'll do it for 10 hours and then temp, 158. And then I'm not actually going to cook it for 10 hours, but I'll come check it every two hours for the first couple hours and then every 30 minutes after that until it's the consistency that we like. So dirt and blood comes out of these game bags and then we're gonna wash them off and hang them out. I don't know how easy it's gonna be for y'all to see this, but look how nasty and red that water is. Lay these on top of the cooler. Mix them out real good. Look at this nasty dark bloody dirt pretty crazy so over a little bit of my gear uh, I'm just packing everything up and I thought it'd be useful for y'all to know uh, these few things so got the game bags drying in the background got to go get the cruiser an alignment done because it is pulling me to the left very hard so I'm gonna go do that here in a second but uh, I wanted to talk about the arrows I'm using a little bit uh, just because when I first started I had no clue I would just buy uh, arrows at Academy or just the local bow shop and they wouldn't really help me out so I just bought pretty much the cheapest arrows I could get uh, but now things have changed and uh, I know what arrows can do and what you spend on arrows is what you get so um, the past f almost four seasons I think I've been shooting these VAPs uh, these are the 300 spine I was shooting the 350 spine for a while and then the arrow setup that I went with for the new Bowtech, I switched over to these 300 spines and they are amazing. I got Ironwell Broadheads. They did a big study, you can go research it uh, on their website, but they did a big study on fletchings. What was the most accurate? What was the best at distance? What was the best at a straight flight? And what was best for their broadheads? And this, I think they're the AAE max hunters is what they are and they said that these fletchings three fletch was by far the best fletching setup that all day every day was the best fletching setup that uh out of any other setup that they have so i used to run a four fletch the micro fletchings which is like half the size of these um and they flew great too but uh i trust what iron will does and and everything that they test so Shooting the iron wheel broadheads. I don't know if y'all can see that. This is an older one. It's probably been through three or four animals in Africa. And that's really what sold me on these arrows is the first trip to Africa, these VAPs. I, I think I only had one arrow break and I shot eight animals. Um, and I've reused countless arrows on countless animals, as well as the iron wheel broadheads. I've reused uh, even some of them without sharpening them because they are they're deadly and I love them. So um, that's the arrow setup I have. I have a 28 inch draw. I couldn't tell you how long my arrows are, but uh, that's what I'm shooting. So it's the VAP uh, Carbon Stainless Steel by Victory Archery. And these are the 300 V1s. That's the arrow setup I'm using. Got a 55 grain insert, 25 grain collar, 100 grain broadheads and the AAE Max Hunter fletchings. Um, so there's my arrow setup for this season and probably for the next few seasons, I'd imagine. But I wanna also 
Tell you a little bit about the pack that I'm running this year. I ran this pack by Kafaru. I've been with Kafaru for a few years running their packs and they're an awesome company. They actually sponsored the elk hunt that I'm posting here in the next week or two. And this is the pack that I wore on that hunt. So this is the hoodlum. Um, the cool thing about Kafaru is you call them and give them your height, weight, size, inseam, and they basically fit it to fit you. So this, I've gained a few pounds since that last hunt, but this pack fits me perfectly. Um, we loaded it down. I had a, let's see, I had a, a hind quarter, a front quarter, a back strap, and the head uh, of the elk that I killed. And we walked down, hiked down the mountain, and it was beautiful everything you can see how the gap is off of my shoulders so you want that weight on your hips and kafaro does a great job of doing that so that keeps you from getting all strained out um but i can fit everything i use this anywhere from a day pack to uh a five to seven day hunt so um i got some attachments i'm not sure i think this is called the guide either the guide pouch or the, the guide okay it's the guide something but it's got this big zipper up top and then you got two little zippers and i think i got a medium a small and a medium or a medium and a large pouch so i can fit everything in here got my spotting scope zipper over here so i can keep that out of the way i can pull it out whenever i need it i don't have to dig through the bottom of my bag to find my spotting scope and then uh, my bow can strap on the back but normally i'm carrying my bow and i put my tripod on this side so spotter tripod all my gear lunch food jet boil uh tent roll everything and this pack has been incredible so um gotta get this thing packed up i got so much to do in such a little time to get ready for this hunt but just a little vlog here today for you guys hope you guys enjoyed it um doing some chores around the house before I leave. So said earlier in the video that we would talk a little bit more about YouTube and um, YouTube hates me, as y'all know, I've said it in several videos recently, uh, they've suppressed the channel basically to where I'm getting like 10,000 views a video. Um, and it's not good. So we're working on that. We're trying to get in contact with YouTube to see what we can do. So I had, our theory is I had the mountain lion video, chicken video, and uh, a bear video and they were all over a million views and the wrong people were watching it so I think my channel got reported a couple hundred thousand times and uh, I think that has a lot to do with why my channel is being suppressed so bad so any hunting content that I put out now it's just like an automatic uh, no you're not getting any views so um, we've been talking about we've been talking about doing some other things y'all let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in this we used to have the molt man uncut and then unfortunately that company went bankrupt not molt man but the company the platform that we were going through to use moltman.net to use molt man uncut they went bankrupt um so that went away but that was a subscription-based platform and we're thinking about doing maybe something again, maybe on Patreon or something different. Y'all leave in the comments if y'all be interested in that. Uh, I definitely would have it, make it worth it for you guys to do it. It wouldn't just be content. It would be exclusive merch. I'd do hunt giveaways. We'd do giveaways with all the sponsors that I work with. I'm sure Kafaru, uh, Utah Air Guns, Made With Meat, Bubba Blades, Shade Knives, uh, Bowtech, there's a bunch of them. So we could do a giveaway, maybe like a big giveaway once a month and then a huge uh, hunt giveaway every year. And then maybe even like spice and merch giveaways weekly. Uh, so y'all leave in the comments, y'all be interested in that. I don't want anything. I don't want to take uh, money away from people. Um, Got to find another way to basically uh, keep doing what we're doing. So uh, I think there's I think there's tiered systems where you can do like $3 a month or $5 a month, something like that. Y'all leave in the comments what you would be willing to pay to watch. There would be exclusive content, but it wouldn't just be exclusive content. There'd be hunt giveaways and all that stuff that I just talked about. So 
Y'all leave it in the comments. Uh, we're working on some new stuff. Maybe a mullet man sauce, some critter glaze, uh, something like that. And we're definitely working on more merch. So we're gonna redo the whole merch site, uh, come out with a bunch of new um, t-shirts, hats, hoodies, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you guys would like to see on this channel or on the merch site, or if you want me to do giveaways, y'all leave it in the comments. Uh, let me know what you guys wanna see because there's very few of you that actually see this now and I'll do everything I can to make you guys happy and keep you sticking around and watch the content. So uh, to everybody that is watching, thank you so much. It means the world to me and my family and uh, I'm ready to go elk hunting. So y'all stay tuned for those videos. Like I said, we got the access video coming up. It's gonna be like a, uh, probably like a 45 minute video, which is gonna be awesome. And then the elk hunt, it's more of like an elk movie. Um, did a huge, awesome cooking segment in it, making some awesome bratwurst out of the elk. So if you wanna learn how to make sausage or bratwurst, um, be sure to stick around for that. I will be, I'll keep you guys updated if you don't follow me on Instagram. Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, y'all go check me out. They're all linked in the description box. Um, I'll keep y'all updated on when that elk movie is gonna be posted. Probably while I'll be in the Elk Mountains, elk hunting is when I'll post it. So I'll stop rambling. Thank you for watching if you're here, uh, down here at the end of the video, listening to me ramble. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good.